Hey there, YouTube land, and before I start talking about what I want to talk about, I want to give a quick uh, shout out there to uh, on a couple of channels. One, uh, if you've been watching TJ Pyramids and know the Creepy Monster Squad's channels, which you really, really should have, so if you haven't done it, get over and subscribe to both their channels. They have a new channel there where they're going to be doing some kind of experimental filmmaking, uh, stuff like that, uh, called, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, JNT Studios. So, Really, really check it out. They got some cool stuff on there now. They got some way more cool stuff coming up as well. Uh, Faligar five one seven, great friend of mine has been doing some uh, movie macabre uh, videos. The Avara nineteen eighties series. He's got, he's got a few of them from Shout Factory. Very jealous of those, but I'm so glad that that uh, he's got them because uh, they're uh, he managed to find one of his favorite early uh, movies from there. Trey Pasher did a great unboxing of uh, some stuff like that, which means. I've got something coming that I'm really excited about. So, uh, thank you, Sammy. And, uh, give love to all these guys. Trey Passer, Falgo 5 and 7, uh, Night Creep Monster Squad, TJ Pyramid, and the new channel, JNT Studios. So, that and there'll be more that I'll be mentioning down the road, too. Some great, great YouTubers. But I just wanted to get that out there right now before I started. And look, in a minute, it's already gone this video. So let's go talk about my favorite TV show of all time. It started in November 24th of 1988. It, yeah. And uh, that started on a little cable network channel called KTMA. And if you know what this is just by that, congratulations. You rock. If you don't, well, we're going to learn a little bit about it right now. Because you are going to get into this show. Trust me, it is awesome. If you like bad movies... If you like comedy, if you like sophisticated robots, then you will love Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh, the basic concept behind this program is that there's a temp worker at the place named uh, Joel who uh, was working down there on the uh, in the underground area. And, you know, because I totally forgot the name of the place right now. Uh, two, Deep 13. Okay. On Deep 13, Dr. Forrester, Clayton Forrester, and Lawrence Earhart shoot him up in a rocket into space, and to keep his sanity, he creates uh, some robots to uh, keep him company. He creates uh, Tom Servo, which kind of looks like a gumball machine with arms. Uh, he creates Crow T. Robot, and of course, uh, Gypsy, and uh, Camot. Camot's kind of like the, uh, you know, the one that's taking the, the footage. And uh, not only is Joel kind of like a, he's kind of a laid-back stoner type of guy, he's also a, an inventor. And this came out of the fact that Joel Hodgson himself, who created an MST3K, uh, was a uh, very popular prop comedian. Think of uh, Carrot Top, but funny. Uh, well, Joel Hodgson had pretty much had that down pat. Uh, every week... The mods, the mad scientists, uh, would send Joel a different, like, horrible movie. Usually science fiction, stuff like that. In the early days, a lot of Gamera stuff. Gamera solidified the popularity of MST through K in the early year. Um, and, you know, a lot of shorts, King of Rocket Man, uh, some General Hospital stuff. I mean, like, really early, uh, you know, 10-minute uh, episodes of General Hospital would come on at the time. And, they would, you know, they'd make fun of it. They'd riff it. They'd, there'd be, like, this kind of, like, silhouette where you'd see of them, and they would pretty much be making fun of the movie throughout the entire thing. And uh, it was hilarious. I mean, like of course, there were ones that didn't hit as well as others, especially in the early days. Now, Josh Weinstein, who uh, played Lawrence Earhart, he left the uh, series early on. And the reason that... And he was the voice of Tom, by the way. The original voice. Um, the reason that he did that was because he wanted a more improvisational approach to the show to keep on going. Now, that was great when you started. But... Uh, and they could, you know, riff and improv like crazy, but uh, when you're doing a show without getting burnt out and stuff like that, and getting the best quality show that they could, there is some, like, scripting that has to be done throughout. As you know, they go on, they, they riff it, they watch it over and over again, and, you know, they get the best possible jokes and uh, the most mileage out of it. And you can see the progression of the show as you go along. Now, after he left, uh, there was a, a void there that needed to be filled. And they didn't want to bring in another character the same as the as Earhart, Earhart had kind of was the uh, a mad scientist too. It was almost an equal, if not an equal, to uh, to Clayton Forrester. He had kind of like a whiny voice and uh, and all these things. Josh Weinstein, by the way, was is a fantastic writer that would go on to write for shows like Freaks and Geeks, and he would bring actors from 
MST3K and Freaks and Geeks. If you want to find out who those are, well, watch Freaks and Geeks or Google it. Because I'm not going to tell you. Because uh, those are two good shows you should be watching. Uh, MST3K just had a fantastic concept. You know, get a bad movie out there, make fun of it, and these guys were the masters of it. Other shows before had tried to before to make fun of like and we find shows, but they were not successful. Not the way uh, that this show was, and not in this format. This was a very long-lasting series. Uh, the uh, actual main protagonist would actually leave the series, uh, Clayton Forster's, uh, you know, Doctor Forster, and have uh, Mary Jo Pell, who uh, basically plays who plays his mother, like take over as the main uh, pro protagonist afterwards. My antagonist afterwards. Uh, and the thing is that she'd been in the show before playing like other different roles, but you know, d disguised and stuff like that, and the brain wouldn't die and, as they had and stuff. And uh, But a lot of them did that. Joel himself left the series uh, about uh, season five, I think. And uh, they needed a new head for it. And, uh, and this has been a great controversy for MST3K fans. They decided to get uh, Mike Nelson. And who is Mike Nelson? He's actually, well, he was the head writer of the show. So, uh, a very likable guy. He had a very different approach to things than uh, than Joel did. He wasn't so much a stoner as he seemed more just naturally laid back, more jockish, and uh, kind of just a nice guy. And uh, basically, uh, I just recently did one of those, you know, which MST3K character are you? Apparently I'm Joel, which uh, actually kind of makes a lot of sense. And my small MST3K uh, collection. The first one, well, one that's not here because it's packed up in behind some other DVDs, and I gotta rearrange some stuff that I do have. It's a Wild Wild World of Batwoman. That's an original Rhino release. It's really hard to get nowadays because the Rhino ones are much harder to get. So, guys, if you can grab the Rhino box sets when you can, pick them up. They're really worth picking up. This was usually this one is uh, one that a lot of people were introduced to Mystery Science Theater uh, collecting on DVD for. I had two before uh, Pop Pete and Mitchell on DVD, on VHS before I got the DVDs. But this was my first uh, Mystery Science Theater DVD. It was in, it was well, it was inexpensive. It was like uh, this one was inexpensive. But when, the original copy I had of this was like thirty something bucks, and it had two. It was called Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand: The Essentials. And why is it called The Essentials? Because it has two absolutely fantastic episodes from Mystery Science Theater that everybody has to see. Uh, Man with the Hands of Fate. If you haven't uh, seen the uh, pain that is Man with the Hands of Fate, you really, you, trust me, you've got to see it. Torgo. You have to see Torgo. And the second one is Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Uh... There's also a blooper reel on this, and of course there's a short hire in part two. It comes pretty simplistic like this. This is a Rhino release. Again, uh, the Rhino releases aren't the easiest to get or the uh, cheapest, so when you find Rhino releases uh, for Mystery Science Theater, Rhino was a big company back in the day that did a lot of music as well. But I found their niche in uh, especially DVDs and stuff like that, uh, kind of like screen, like Shout Factory would do later on, and uh, with many of the people from Rhino would from here. Uh, speaking of which, Shout Factory took over and the first one that I bought was a big set. It included a, this Tom Servo figure right here which I'm very very proud of having. And it was number 16. And why number 16 of all the ones to go for? Well, aside from the Tom Servo figure which was pretty awesome. And I paid a nice bit for this. My dad actually found this brand new uh, in a store once for like nine bucks which is really really cool for these so it has uh, The Corpse Vanishes of Bell uh Warrior of the Lost World fantastic uh, the greatest one of the greatest warp Christmas movies of all time Santa Claus and Night of the Blood Beast another great I mean like how can I describe these movies uh Ned the Blood Beast. You know what? 
This is 16. This is the 25th anniversary edition. This is part one of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I'm going to upload this now and then, then we're going to talk about all the movies that are on those sets because uh, they deserve to be looked at a little bit closer. Thanks for watching, guys, and for me right now, before it gets cold, it's time for tea.